Hello everyone. So in previous video we have understood about stepper motor and how to rotate in clockwise direction and how to rotate in anti-clockwise direction. But in that case we don't know in how much time duration your pole should be shifted, right? In this program we will try to understand and incorporate the concept of timer along with your stepper motor. So all the stepper motor concept is going to be same. Just have a quick refresh before getting inside your programming. So and stator will be there. And after that, it is going to have its poles. It is going to have its rotor. So depending upon the poles which is given to your stator, your uh, rotor is going to rotate on this direction, right? We have seen all these things in our previous video itself. So it's the basic concepts of your stepper motor. So while getting inside, so we can able to see we have seen all these things. This is your stepper motor. So this is your uh, pulse which is given to this poles and this is your power supply for your stepper motor and this is your driver transistor for your stepper motor poles exactly connected to that one and this is one for communication of your data from your 8051 to your driver and this is supply for your poles and this is a, a supply for your motor and this is power supply which has to be given to your driver. So I can able to get it to the driver. So this power supply is an external power supply which are going to get it from the adapter, right? We have seen all these things. So here the program which is given to you is going to be write an assembly language program to rotate a stepper motor in clockwise direction using port zero. Every step should, uh, should be taken with the duration of one second with timer zero. So here I'm going to bring the concept of your timer here. So we know that port to be accessed is going to be P0 and it should rotate in clockwise direction and you have to enable your timer 0 and after that what is the duration you want? Duration is going to be 1 second, right? So while checking in terms of timer program, we have understood how to create this 1 second delay, right? So we can able to quite quickly refresh all those things. So your crystal oscillator frequency is going to be 11.0592 megahertz. So if you are going to calculate its time period, just divided by 1, 1 divided by this value is going to give about 1.085 microseconds. So if you are going to activate your timer 0 and the maximum and minimum value which we can able to give is 0, 0. So it is going to start its count from 0, 0, 0, 0 to FCF, FCF. For this case, how much time we will be taking? So if you are going to put it in the equation, we can able to confirm that it is going to be 71.1065 millisecond. So if you know that it is a millisecond, if you are going to multiply it by 14, so that you can able to create your one second delay. So you have to iterate the loop for 14 times so that you can able to create your one second delay. So your TH and TL value should be 0, 0 for this one. So we have already done this program. Please go to that exact video. The link is also in description. Just go to that and clearly understand how we have done this one and we can able to come back to this program. So this is our program. So here uh, we are saying that uh, P0 should be your output port. So if it is going to be P0, it is a register which is getting the value of P0. So P0 will be activated as your output port. So we are going to give supply to that output port. So in previous uh, program, I have taken the value of 88H, right? Which is going to be getting the value of 1000 and after that 1000, right? So here I am trying to take a different value if I am going to get the value of 66. So 8421 combination, right? 0, 1, 1, 0. After that, a 0, 1, 1, 0, right? If I am going to shift in terms of poles, if I am going to make one rotation, so this is going to reach this position, this is going to reach this position, this is going to reach this position, this is going to reach like this, it is going to shift its poles, right? So if it is going to be in between, so if this is going to be north pole, and as well as this is also going to be north pole in terms of your stator. So your rate, uh, rotor will align to in terms of your midpoint. So this is your south pole and this is your north pole. So it is trying to align between these two poles, right? So it is going to be taking its mid position. So like this also we can able to do. So if you are going to shift the poles again, so this is going to be becoming your south pole. So it is going to be uh, distracted. So after that, this is going to be taking its north pole position. Next one, uh, it is going to be taking in terms of north pole here, sorry. 
so it is going to be taking this position right so it is going to be taking this position between these two north poles so like this we can able to shift with the value of 66 also so again it is going to have take, uh, take same number of pulses other things are same instead of attracting towards north pole it is going to be lying in between two north poles that is the difference i am going to make here so if you are convenient with 88 please use your 88 itself so this is also an valid number so that we can able to have this rotation so p0 get this value with a so that 66 is going to be taking its position so that at first position itself it is going to take the uh, rotor is going to take the mid position of two different north poles so after that one so there i have used the concept of rra rrc right rotate right with carry so here i am just using rr rotate right without carry right you can use anything so both the things are going to take the same kind of output so only thing or oh, extra bit of carry will be added here the extra bit of carry will not be added that's the only thing so if you are going to rotate right it is going to rotate in clockwise direction if you are going to rotate left it is going to take your uh, left side direction or anti clockwise direction right so it is going to be working on your accumulator data so after that one you can able to move to uh, a call delay so in this delay program we have seen the same program uh, lines i have given so t mod register it is going to get the value of 0 1 so that it is going to be activated as your timer 0 and it can be operated in terms of your mode 1 which is 16 bit timer mode right so after that tl0 and th0 is going to be 0 0 minimum value which we are going to take and after that r1 move the value with 0 d 0 d which means it is going to repeat the root by 14 times right so in order to create 71 point something delay millisecond delay if you want to convert it to one second so i have to multiply it i have to loop make the loop for 14 times 14 in terms of hexadecimal is going to be 0 d so after that set by tr0 which is going to starting its count so that it is going to start its count from 0 0 0 0 to ff ff so after that uh, it is going to check when it's reaching ff ff whenever it is going to reach ff ff your overflow flag will be set so till this time your overflow flag is set it is going to wait so as like your polling method we are going to repeatedly see your tf0 flag so without calling bell you are going to keep waiting on your door right that is the example we have taken so like the same it is going to be your polling method so always it is going to see this tf not whether it is getting cleared or not so after it is getting the value of one i will clearing these two values and i will reduce my r1 so the value of 0d or 14 is going to be becoming 0c and next iteration it is going to become 0b like this it is going to reach till 00 so that total count duration is going to be one second so return so this a call delay is going to jump here and after that it is finding returning it is going to bring back here so we have seen all these things right so just have a quick glance on the things it is going to be looking like an interrupt service routine so interrupt service routine is going to move to this here so whenever it is going to identify its return it is going to jump back to the next instruction when it is finding here it is as jump here right so it is going to jump here so again uh, if it is going to be uh, 0 1 1 0 after that 0 1 1 0 so if it is going to be rotate right so I, all these things are going to be jumping here right so 0 0 1 1 after that 0 0 1 1 right so the value of 66 will be converted to 4 1 right it's 33 so again if it is going to jump here i will get the value one here and i will have the value one here also right so in next jump it is going to take the value of uh, 1001 after that 1001 so 8 plus 1 it is going to be 99 right so like this it is going to be shifting its pole so that uh, your rotor is going to take the mid position of the two north poles and two south poles so this is a program so here i am going to create a one second delay between each clock which means it is going to look similarly like your clock at every one second your second uh, needle is going to tick right like the same it is going to tick for every one second that is how uh, we are going to design our program and we are going to do that so with this we can directly move inside our programming so i can able to take with this one so yeah same thing I have taken so i have taken the value of 66 and after that i will be getting the value of rr if it is going to be rotate right it is going to be right side rotation clockwise rotation 
If it is going to be RL, it is left side rotation, it is anti-clockwise. So every single pulse is going to be there for your one second. So this is delay to create your one second delay. Right? So we can able to run this program. Before that, we will try to take your half portion of your kit. Yeah. So I hope uh, half portion of your kit is visible and half portion your programming is visible to you. So in order to make it, make it more visible, I am reducing this size. So if you want to see the value of your accumulator, you can able to see here. But as of now, I don't want to see. So I am just moving these values here. So here I am going to create a one second delay, right? So I can save this program. After that, I have to press reset here. Previously, if I am running something, you have to press reset. After that, you have to come out of debug mode. So after that, you can able to save it, translate, build, rebuild. And after that, you can enter into your debug mode. If you are entering inside your debug mode, you have to run, right? So all these things are same. We have seen already all these things, right? This is the cable for connect connection between your 8051 and your driver. This is communication between your PC and your 8051. This is your power supply. This is your power supply for your driver. And this is your power supply for your stepper motor. And this is the supply for your poles, right? We have seen all these things in your previous program itself, right? So if you are trying to uh, switch it on, if you are trying to run this program, so it is rotate right, right? So it is taking clockwise direction. You can able to see this thing, right? So it is going to take clockwise direction, but it is going to rotate after every one second. So after every one second, it is going to tick, right? So this is the purpose of your timer. So I can, it's looking, uh, if I am going to place some, uh, bars as like your real clock it is going to be your second needle needle of seconds it is going to be denoting seconds right it is going to be denoting seconds so that it can able to be directly connected to your second needle right so i can able to make a real time clock with this one so like this we can able to rotate it in right side direction for clockwise if you want to rotate in left side direction so you have to press reset it is stop so at this point I can able to come out of my programming. Your programming mode will be coming out of your uh, run mode. So at this point, I can able to come out of my debug mode. After coming out of my debug mode, I can able to make rotate left. And I can able to disable this one. And I can able to save it, translate, build, rebuild. And you can click on debug. Okay. So your program is ready. So now it has to rotate in left so that it is going to rotate in your anti-clockwise direction. Right? So if I'm going to click on it, so it is going to start rotating in your anti-clockwise direction. We can able to see this one, right? So every pulse or every uh, movement it is going to make, it is going to take for one second. After one second only, it is going to make its next movement. So it is inverse of your clock. Right? So we can able to see this. So like this. I can able to increase the delay, I can able to decrease the delay. So if it is the delay is very less, if I am going to give it in terms of 500 micro um, milliseconds or if it is going to be in terms of uh, 250 milliseconds, at least that's, it will try to capture the speed of 250 milliseconds, I think. So 500 milliseconds, it is exactly going to capture, it is going to take half the time, half second for every moment, right? So all these things we can able to make a try and you can able to make it. So if I'm asking that it should be taking a particular time duration, instead of giving 0, 0, you have to calculate the value of TH and TL0 as like we have done your timer programming. Then you have to uh, burn that program inside your kit and you are going to run this your program, right? So like the same, so I can able to create an interrupt program also. So I can able to program it in that way that if I'm going to press this interrupt 1 or interrupt 0, your rotation has to change its direction. Right, like the same also, you can make your uh, program to be. So you know that vector address, right? So we have seen all these things in previous uh, videos. So you can able to take those things, and you can able to make sure that if you are going to press your interrupt button, your direction of rotation is going to change from clockwise to anti-clockwise direction or anti-clockwise to clockwise direction. Right? Yeah, that's it in this video. So we have understood about driver and your interface to your 8051 kit and your stepper motor architecture or stepper motor uh, basics and how you can able to make it to rotate in clockwise direction and anti-clockwise direction. Uh, here, in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, every movement in terms of pole should be taking one second delay.
So thank you for your patient listening.